Education pre-games webinar for the Winter Games coming up next weekend. Um, we appreciate your attendance for this meeting. Uh, we'll give some valuable information and some, some sharing of ideas and suggestions. And I want to also let you know that I know we have George Hergen on, who is our CFO here at Special Mix Maryland, also the Director of Competition for the Winter Games. Mike Sarnowski on the line as our VP of Programs. Jane Dunn, who uh, does all of the housing. Hopefully everyone has spoken to her by, now, by this point. Uh, Neil Coffey, who is our Winter Games Director, and Anna Albert, who oversees uh, ceremonies and awards for Alpine. So, um, again, thank you everyone for attending, and we'll go ahead and get started in the next slide. Again, just briefly, this is the agenda. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but we'll go over, over a lot of the um, information for Winter Games. Uh, we'll see a schedule that I will also send out because it will be very small on the screen, but that will be sent out along with the slides from this meeting uh, to all the head coaches, HODs, and for those of you which uh, we do have email addresses. Um, I will also send out the event guide, um, which I've already sent out, so hopefully everyone has already seen that. Um, the evaluation link for after the Winter Games, um, the the schedule that I just mentioned you'll see is a spreadsheet and I'll send out um, either a PDF or an Excel version of that. And then also our survey uh, will be going out for lunch tickets, lift tickets, and rental equipment as we did for time trials. Next. And the purpose of tonight's meeting is basically just for the organizing committee or our games management team, uh, the staff here at Special Olympics Maryland to talk to um, the head of delegation, I mean, anyone else who uh, is on the line, and just provide um, uh, a line of communication uh, leading up to the Winter Games. And for those of you who aren't aware, uh, we said this before the time trials, but we all are uh, pleased to welcome back Special Olympics Delaware that will be joining us in the Alpine competition at Winter Games. Next. One thing I do want to uh, mention, I know uh, the time trials was not the best of circumstances due to the rain and the uh, weather conditions. Um, so I just want to, uh, for, on behalf of Special Olympics Maryland, send a thank you to the delegations uh, for the coaches' dedication, the athletes, the partners. Um, it, it was not, again, the best of circumstances, but I think we made the best with, with the weather. And I saw a lot of smiling faces, uh, not only on athletes and coaches and partners, but also from volunteers, um, the whitetail staff, et cetera. So I think that's a true testament um, to the mindset that you guys as HODs and coaches have set forth for your delegations and continue to uh, uh, put a smiling face, if you will, on the, on the Special Olympics movement. So thank you all for your dedication last weekend and getting through those, uh, those few days. Next. Here's a overall general schedule for Winter Games. Um, the one thing that isn't on this slide is breakfast will be served at the hotels at 6 a.m. Uh, and we will have a delegation registration in the control center um, at Whitetail, along with volunteer registration, the family registration and hospitality at both locations, which we'll talk to in a minute, uh, will open at 9.30. Uh, the opening ceremony will kick off at 11, at lunch, and hit it, uh, head into competition, Alpine first at 12.15, no showing at 1.30. Um, at the hotels, uh, the check-in will be open at 2 to 5, and I think that begins on Sunday. Um, for those of you who aren't coming up on Sunday, um, it will be available on Monday as well. So hit the dinner, uh, the head of delegation meeting on Monday evening at the Ramada Plaza, the dance, and the family reception. We'll get in all the details on um, these things uh, as we move out through throughout the slide presentation. And then we hit Tuesday. Again, there's uh, breakfast on there again. Delegation check-in, it's important. Again, we'll stress that. Delegation check-in will be in the control center. The, de the head of delegation needs to go to the control center each day, check-in. 
Uh, that's when you'll get your lift tickets and lunch tickets, et cetera, for the day for your entire delegation. Um, and again, on Tuesday, the family registration, the hospitality will open a little earlier um, at 8.30. Get in the competition, have lunch, uh, continue competition, have awards, and um, send everybody on their way with big smiling faces. This is the schedule. I don't expect you to be able to see it, but just know that this document will be sent along with the um, slide presentation in a separate format so that you can manipulate it and um, uh, send it out in readable form, if you will. The one thing I want to stress when you get this uh, schedule, please read through the notes that you see on at the bottom of the grid on Tuesday. The times here are the actual start times of competition. I know in the Alpine and the snowshoeing webinars, they'll talk about uh, the report time, but these are not the staging times. These are the actual competitions. Uh, so we at least want the athletes to report to staging, um, you know, no later than 15 minutes prior to that start time. And again, you'll see this, but just make note to read the notes on this slide when, when you get them. Again, hopefully most of you have seen this already. It's just the general overview of Whitetail. Um, a few things that I'd like to point out, Mike, if you could help me with the cursor, is the control center um, is right in this area. It was not in the same location as we were at time trials. So if you walk down and you're heading out the patio of the lodge, You'll take a left, there'll be the rental center, and then it's the next building, it's the very last building down the road. You'll walk down that path right into the control center there. We also will have signage indicating that as well. Um, in that same building, we have overnight ski storage, which we'll talk about a little bit. So the ski storage for overnight on Monday night um, will be in that same building. And then we can talk about at Alpine staging, It is as you're walking down that level heading to the control center, there'll be a tent there. That's where Alpine staging will be. And then we have in the lodge itself, we have the family hospitality area, which is up. It's not in the same place it was at time trials, but it's almost the same location. It's in the new addition at the lodge and it's in the Solstice Restaurant. So it's got a great bay window to look up the mountain and see the competition. Um, then right off the back patio, that's where the opening ceremony and Alpine Awards will be. So you walk through the breezeway on the mountain side of the resort, right through that area, and on the back patio, that's where uh, the awards and opening ceremony will be. And if you're coming in the main resort, off to the right will be the direction for the snowshoeing competition and also for the shuttle uh, pickup, taking people to and from the main parking lots and uh, dropping them off over that snowshoe uh, venue. Okay? Again, this is just a Google Earth shot. Um, we can kind of look there at the opening ceremony location as we talked about the patio and then walking down that area to the award, the Alpine staging, taking a left right after that, we hit the control center and the overnight ski storage. And again, the family hospitality will be in the new lodge up in the solstice room, right where the cursor is currently. And the snowshoeing venue and shuttle bus pickup was right in that curved area. Uh, this is the restricted lot for handicapped parking and staff for Whitetail, um, or you can pick up the shuttles to take you to Snowshoe. Very, very regular basis on the shuttles, so uh, we appreciate Whitetail um, helping us with that. The Alpine courses, these are as they stand currently. Obviously, the weather is a consideration. We're going to uh, obviously hope and pray for snow, cold weather coming. Um, so this is what we intend to have happen and what courses will be utilized if everything goes smoothly. Um, if we do have some weather considerations that we've got to uh, adapt 
and accommodate to what is available at Whitetail. Um, we'll, we'll work with the mountain operations personnel and come up with uh, the best scenario we can do. Uh, and hopefully, uh, we'll have snow. So, um, and Steve, if we can pause for just a second. Uh, George, uh, I've tried to send you your pin several times, and it doesn't seem to open you up. Um, since I know that you are speaking later, uh, if you could log out and log back in, that the phone sign-in will pop up when you do that, um, and uh, that should give you your PIN. Okay? Thank you. And here is a snowshoeing venue again. Uh, these were, are going over uh, in further detail with the Alpine and snowshoeing webinars, but just to give you a basic um, outline of the snowshoeing venue. The snowshoeing parking, as you can see to the left, um, that is the general parking. That's where we need everyone to park. As it says, no delegation parking past this point. That is where the mountain operations um, individuals need to be coming in and out for their daily operations. Um, and that's where the shuttle can go to drop off athletes to get them closer to the mountain ops uh, slash staging slash check-in for snowshoeing. Um, what you will see is a family hospitality tent that will be there um, very near the snowshoeing awards down to the bottom right of the screen. Again, the family hospitality tent is, is designed so as, as well as the Alpine family hospitality um, over at the lodge for family members. It's not necessarily for delegation members, athletes, uh, volunteers, management team, etc. Uh, that's uh, uh, for the purpose of the families coming to support the athletes and partners at the event. A little nice hospitality to um, welcome them to the Winter Games. Again, the second building there is where the snowshoeing registration and staging will be. Uh, they'll walk out to the back side of that building, come out onto the courses, do their warm-ups, and get ready for competition. The head of delegation meeting, as we mentioned, will be Monday. Uh, the 27th at uh, 6.30, that will be at the Ramada Plaza. Uh, we can, you can check in uh, at the front desk and we'll have some signs to let you know which room that will be, but it will be in the front door uh, down the left on the main hallway. And again, it's basically a very brief meeting. We just want to share any updates that we have from the Monday's operations going into, going into Tuesday and allow any questions um, that you as HODs would have for us, any suggestions, etc. cetera. Um, it will be a very small room, um, so it's limited space. Uh, so we, we ask you to uh, only send one representative. Hopefully it's yourself as an HOD who can make that meeting, um, again, because the space is limited. Registration, again, each day the head of delegation will need to come to the control center to check in. Uh, we pointed that out where that location is at the earlier slides. Um, that will be 8 o'clock a.m. on Monday and Tuesday. Again, each day. Um, that's where you get your lift packets, uh, your lift tickets, excuse me, your rental equipment tickets, and your lunch tickets as well. Um, you can also report scratches there. As they ha if they happen overnight or whatever. But leading up to the event, as soon as you know scratches, go ahead and let us know. Um, if, you, if you have them in by this coming Tuesday at 5 p.m., uh, there will be no charge. But after that deadline, the delegations, areas, et cetera, will be charged for the uh, full rate of the registration fee. So make note of that, uh, 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Get your scratches in as well as you know, and then after that, we'll, we have to do the full charge on that. Um, the notification of scratches uh, right there is Mike Sarnowski's um, email address, and you can also send them to your contact uh, regional sports director. And we'll show those, uh, share that information at the end of this webinar as well. We talked about the full registration free. Um, $120, and again, basically that's to help co partially cover some of the on-site costs for Winter Games. Um, we talked about the scratches. Uh, the one thing there is if you have 
those delegations who have more than a three athlete to one chaperone slash coach ratio, uh, there will be a $180 charge for those who go over that three to one ratio. Um, and again, unified partners are not included in calculating that ratio, but the, the cost for anyone who goes over that three to run three to one ratio will be $180. Check-in process, we already hit on it both days, 8 o'clock a.m. Um, similar to time trials, uh, any unused tickets, whether it's lunch tickets, um, rental equipment tickets, lift tickets, whatever, as long as you turn those in on Monday, for those that were issued on Monday by 1, and those that were issued on Tuesday by 1 o'clock as well, for any unused tickets, yeah those won't, will not be charged back to your delegation. If it's after 1 o'clock, um, well, we will have to charge a delegation for all the tickets that were issued earlier that morning. Uh, and Steve, uh, Steve okay. as a newbie, I'm, I know you, uh, you're, you're learning stuff. The, uh, there is no, the, the cost for those tickets are covered by the registration fee, so there actually is no refund that helps. Uh, but turning those tickets in does uh, help defer the cost uh, for Special Olympics. Okay, thanks for clarification, Mike. So yeah, that, they, they're directly for that own, for those tickets only at the time trials and at the coach training. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, also, on Sunday, there's there's going to be no bibs um, issued, no registration check-in um, for those delegations who want to participate and take advantage of uh, skiing and some more practice on the slopes. Welcome to do so. Just go to the um, group sales ticket window and. Uh, Express that you're with Special Olympics Maryland to get the uh, discounted rates, and you will be considered as general public uh, to ski as as you well see. Just make sure that um, athletes and uh, partners are are properly supervised with coaches um, out on the courses. Again, as we've stressed over and over, parking please only park in the designated public parking areas. Um, there will be signs up from Whitetail and others, but again, just just be mindful of, of letting everyone know from your delegation to only park in the general uh, public parking areas. Housing information. I'll speak on a few things here, Jane, and then um, we'll have Jane Dunn, who's with us from our management team, uh, speak on some any other uh, clarifications or additional information. But we do have three different ho um, housing sites that Jane was uh, working hard to secure and also to um, pack the house with. Um, that's the Ramada Plaza, the Holiday Inn Express, which is right beside the Ramada Plaza, and also the Country Inn and Suites, which is about um, a half a mile down the road, right across the street from Ramada and the Holiday Inn Express. Um, Check-ins for all the delegations will be at each hotel for their room keys, etc. And that will start from 2 to 5 uh, p.m. on Sunday and then roll over to Monday. Um, for families, families have been sent information in regards to which properties uh, we suggested for family housing. Uh, so that, that information has already been sent to families. And um, again, just highlighting that the, the new locations, as Mike said um, earlier, it, it's a uh, much better accommodations based on what I've heard from the past. And it's a little bit closer as well. So um, on behalf of the hotels, also to eliminate any confusion, please don't call them directly. Um, work any housing concerns you have or changes, switches, whatever, uh, directly through Jane. She's the one point of contact for those hotels uh, related to delegations. Um, we will have medical rooms. Um, there will be one uh, medical individual. Um, I believe that is Wayne Lewis staying at the Country Inn and Suites. His exact room will be or, uh, given out to you guys on registration. We're still working through that process right now, make sure um, everyone's housed and what exact room he will be in. Uh, at the Ramada Plaza, uh, we will have Dottie Turner from Allegheny County who will be uh, serving in the medical capacity for overnights um, for the Ramada Plaza as well as the Holiday Inn Express, which again is right beside it. Um, anything you'd like to add on that, Jane, for now? Um, 
So that's that, just to let you know, um, because we're in more than one property, um, the peop, the um, Frederick is the only uh, delegation that will be at the Holiday Inn Express. And um, I'm going to make arrangements with the hotel. They'll just check in right at the hotel that I'm trying to get um, somebody to be at the Country Inn, uh, a volunteer from Special Olympics to check in people at the, the Country Inn, and I will be at the Ramada Plaza. Now, even though it says 2 to 5 on Monday, obviously, as everyone knows, if people get delayed on the mountain, I will be there until everybody has picked up their keys, even if it's uh, long past 5 o'clock. Um, so um, just to let you know, um, for every, anybody that might not have gotten an email, um, so we have um, Montgomery, uh, Lower Shore, and Delaware at the Country Inn, uh, Frederick at the Holiday Inn Express, and the other delegations are at the Ramada. Um, we are using um, every room at the Ramada, and even at that, that was um, the way the hotel is laid out. It only has a hun about 118 rooms available. So I, I literally have every room used and uh, tried to accommodate as best as I could. Um, just to let you know, and I know you have all do this anyway, um, check out on Tuesday. Keys need to be dropped off just at the front desk before 11 a.m. I know everybody checks out before then, but just to let you know, you need to be checked out by 11 a.m. Um, as to the dinner, which is at the Ramada, and that dinner at the Ramada is for anybody, whether they're staying at the Ramada or they're staying at one of the other hotels. Um, because of the space limitations, we don't have as much space as we did at Hager Hall the last several years. Um, we're going to have to turn over the dining um, for the dance. So it's going to be a little bit challenging. Um, but so what we're asking the delegations, first of all, is we would encourage the um, delegations not staying at the Ramada, that they might want to plan to come potentially maybe about 6 o'clock for dinner um, so that their athletes do not have to hang around the Ramada before the dance starts for a long time. But with that being said, I do encourage people, especially at the Ramada, because we do want to turn the rooms over as quickly as possible, that if your delegations, if some of your delegation members get in early, especially the snowshoers, which are normally back much before the Alpine, we would encourage them to go to dinner at when the, when the um, uh, Cumberland opens, which will be about 5 o'clock. And we also would ask them is once they are finished, rather than um, hanging around, if they could um, you know, maybe go back to their rooms or whatever in order to give um, space for other people to come in. Um, this is a work in progress. We hope it will go smoothly, but we're asking everybody to just be aware of the challenges. Um, one other thing, um, and I never remember this, and but thanks to um, Michelle at St. Mary's, she did list two of her athletes are, um, have gluten-free diets. We would like to accommodate as much as we can. Now, we will have a vegetarian option on the buffet. So if you have athletes, coaches, et cetera, that are vegetarian, there will be a vegetarian option. If you have a specific need, such as gluten-free, what are, please let me know prior, to, at least um, by next Wednesday, because we're going to, they're going to make arrangements. If you need a gluten-free meal, we will give you a ticket that you will turn into a server and they will provide the gluten-free meal. Um, I know in the past we haven't been that um, accommodating just because I haven't been paying that much attention to it. But anyway, I do want to say that the hotel wants to do whatever they can. There may be some um, dietary needs they won't be able to meet, but we will do our best to accommodate everybody. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Steve, can you think of anything else, or George, or Mike? Um, uh, can you hear me now? Steve, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, no, I think you covered it great, Jane. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I think there's a slide later that touches on food as well, and that'll uh, cover uh, 
uh, that, uh, as was noted in the last, in the snowshoe uh, call, uh, that families, that, that the dinner at uh, the Ramada uh, is strictly for delegation members. Uh, the families uh, are not able to join uh, for the dinner. Um, uh, there are plenty of eating options all around, but there's, a, as Jane has indicated, there's a space issue. Um, uh, we, we have to, we're going to have to do shifts anyway. Uh, uh, the other thing I would say is that the seating is in a couple different rooms um, uh, for dinner, and so uh, we're, we're striving to have some volunteers there to serve as sort of ushers to guide folks to where some open space might be. Good information. Thank you, everyone. Again, just the location of the hotels, uh, the old location, new location, and it's, uh, again, about 15 minutes closer to Whitetail. So uh, not only are the accommodations better, but it's also closer. So moving on. Um, at the hotels, um, for overnight emergencies, and, and I stress that, this, this, these are true emergencies, not hey. My, my hot water is not hot enough, or I can't find the remote control. Um, these are for true emergencies. Um, at the Country Inn and Suites, that will be Mike Sarnowski, and there you have his cell number. And for the Ramada Plaza and Holiday Inn Express, it'll be myself, and that's my cell number. Um, again, um, because the Holiday Inn is, is so close to the Ramada, I'll be covering both those sites as Mike will be at the Country Inn and Suites. But again, just stress that these are true emergencies, um, so keep that in mind and just be respectful of uh, the cell numbers um, as you give them out to your delegation or, or as you see fit. And, and just a point there, uh, Jane, can you describe for folks, uh, since I don't think we touched on it, um, while the Holiday Inn Express is right across the parking lot from the Ramada, uh, how, can you describe how close the Country Inn is? It's, not, it, it's very close. To the it, I actually just did a um, map quest um, earlier today. It, it says it's 0. 0.6 of a mile. Um, it's it's actually over um, right by, right in basically next to the um, I don't know what that mall is called, but whatever that mall is Valley called. Mall. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Valley mall. Um, it, it's it's right next to that mall, and it's 0. 0.6 of a mile. It's I don't see people walking it for a number of reasons. Number one, there's a lot of traffic. But it's definitely, it says it's three minutes by car from the, um, from the country end to the Ramada. And there is quite a bit of parking at the Ramada. If you, you know, you can go around the back. There's plenty of places to park there. If, for instance, um, you're bringing um, your athletes over in a bus, you can just go around to the back and there's plenty of parking for buses. Um, so I, I think it's, yeah, I know if, if those of you who are on the call remember the first year we were at Whitetail, we actually had three hotels in our block. We had that one that was right off of 40 and then we had one far, a little bit past the Clarion. And so um, we had to do it that, um, that year. Um, so um, I know this is not as convenient as it has been, but for those of you who have experienced the Clarion deterioration over the last five years, it's, I, I think it's, people are going to appreciate the fact that they're going to be staying in a nicer hotel. Great. Thank you, Jane. Overnight ski storage, again, we kind of pointed that out on the map. Um, the rental forms will be required for all ski rentals. Um, we will have containers in that location um, that will be marked for each delegation. Uh, in those containers, that is just strictly for your skis and poles. Take your boots and helmets with you. Um, and again, we encourage everyone to come up with a, a system to label your skis um, so that um, different athletes, partners, coaches, whatever, don't end up with someone else's skis and poles. So, um, again, we just make that convenient for you guys to store those overnight. And we'll typically have duct tape and Sharpies there um, to assist with that. George, did you have any comment on that? I know that you're dealing with it more frequently. Um, yeah, I think the um, 
I'm glad you mentioned the uh, labeling of the skis, Mike. That it's very important. We've seen athletes come out with the wrong skis on, so um, you know, please be careful and label everything, especially the rental equipment, and uh, just keep keep a close eye on it when you're putting it on the next morning. Thank you, George. Opening and closing ceremony, or opening and lack thereof a closing ceremony. Um, for the opening ceremony, uh, we want to have two individuals from each delegation uh, participate in the parade. Um, that can be two athletes, an athlete and a partner, or whatever, but they need to report to the area that I indicated where the Alpine staging for competition is um, by 10 a.m. on Monday. And again, only two individuals. We're going to have a banner for them to carry in um, and be recognized during the parade. Um, if there are delegations who are unable to have two individuals report by 1015, we'll obviously recognize those delegations in the script and give recognition, but they just won't be able to participate in the parade due to the time that's needed to uh, get them, make sure we have the right names, get them lined up, get them in the script, etc. Uh, the ceremony will start promptly at 11. And um, again, I said lack thereof a closing ceremony. We don't do an official closing ceremony. Um, however, we will have some closing remarks at each of the competition awards areas, um, to, and those will occur obviously at the la after the last presentation of awards. There will be a closing remarks at the Snowshoe Awards area as well as the Alpine Awards area. Um, the location of the opening ceremony, as we talked about, will be on the back patio of Whitetail. Um, approximate seating for about 225 to 250 people, um, depending on the layout and um, we'll have some stanchions roped off so that uh, the individuals can come from staging and come down the aisle and be recognized and we'll have some dedicated seats for those individuals who are participating um, in the parade. So, and Anna, I'm not sure if Anna's on the phone, Mike, do you know? Uh, I do not see her uh, signed into the webinar. Uh, with the new system, if she only called in, unfortunately we can't open up her line to speak. Uh, that's okay, so Anna, if I, I hope I've hit everything uh, properly there. So um, the one thing that we also um, always say is we'll have an, a PA system, obviously, but just be mindful and, re, and, and respectful of the ceremonies that are occurring, the announcements, the presentations, the athlete MCs, and keep any, any background noise or individual conversations to a minimum or to a, a very small um, hush, and also respect those who are around you who want to make sure they hear um, the announcements and um, the pageantry of the ceremony. Thank you, Mike. Additional events, um, again, we're going to offer the snowboarding demo. Uh, that'll be Tuesday at around 1030. Um, again, this is only for individuals who um, have experience with snowboarding. It's not a um, come Steve, I'm sorry. Steve, excuse yep. me. I'm sorry, I, don't, I guess you just didn't get the message, but uh, that's not going to happen this year. The person who uh, who tried to do it last year has not returned, and we can't contact him. So okay. sorry for the bad information, but that will not be happening this year. Okay, so the snowboarding demo we hope will come back next year. And uh, we, <laughs> we appreciate those who were able to take advantage of it in the previous years. Um, we will have some more skiing on the slopes and good competition for snowshoeing and alpine. So thanks, thanks for that clarification, George, and sorry for any confusion there, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, one thing we always stress, and as an HOD, uh, we want you to uh, pass this along to not only your coaches but other members of the delegation and your family members. It's also being stressed in each of the sports webinars, but we just don't want to have anyone um, athletes or partners become DQ'd, disqualified, um, due to a coaching violation. Um, uh, athletes and partners should have been trained and, and gone through the proper protocol and be able to compete independently. Um, so any spectator, uh, coach, family member, other delegation member who gives coaching instructions um, could uh, cause that athlete or partner to become disqualified. Um, so coaching is prohibited in the start area, um, and while the athlete or partner is on the competition course for Alpine, um, the coaches may ask to speak to the athlete or partner 
for a short time uh, in between the runs, but um, we want to make sure, obviously, that if you need to speak with them, that doesn't delay uh, those individuals getting to the start gate for their second run. And we'll continue the coaching um, instructions or instructions not to coach on the next slide. So what is coaching? Um, it's specific instructions and, and assistance given to the athlete or partner um, to gain an advantage. So, you know, anyone that says, you know, if you're coming down for a gated course for Alpine, red gate, blue gate, um, or if they fall, put your skis downhill, um, it's easier to get up that way. Actions like that um, could is a violation and could cause the athlete to get disqualified. Um, so if you're not sure, if you're on the borderline of what you're saying, just always just shout encouragement, you know, um, good job, John. Let's 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 go, Susie. Hey, you're doing great. Keep it up. Um, you know that type of. Obviously, that's not coaching. That's just encouragement, and that's what the athletes and partners want to hear while they're on the course. Now, to the consequences. Obviously, we talked about the athlete or partner. If if the officials um, deem that there was coaching involved, um, the athlete or partner could be decued from the race. Uh, which would eliminate them from a medal um, or a place ribbon, but they could, uh, put, uh, you know, get a participation ribbon for the event. Um, for the people who are doing the coaching, whether it's the coach, a spectator, family member, other delegation member, etc., cetera, um, for the first offense, uh, they'll be required to leave the race course for the duration of that event. Have a second offense. Um, the management team um, will uh, remove them from the winter games entirely. So nobody wants that to happen. Nobody wants an athlete or partner to be disqualified because of coaching. So that's why I stress, don't just let your coaches know, family members know, your other delegation members, et cetera. So we just, we just don't want it to happen, and I know you guys don't either. So just stress that at your delegation meeting. I think one of the key things here is we're not, we're not trying to be, um, you know, just uh, bureaucratic or sticklers to the rules and such, although we do stick to the rules. Um, th this coaching causes and gives that athlete an unfair advantage over the other uh, four to seven athletes that are in their division or in their heat. Uh, and so it is to protect the interests of the other athletes against whom they're competing is the, the core reason for this. Uh, and the overall fairness. Uh, George, I know you, you've been very um, uh, instrumental in uh, putting all this together on coaching. Did you have anything to add? Um, I think you just hit the nail on the head, Mike. It's, it's the, clearly the issue is not giving an unfair advantage to one athlete over another. Um, so that's why we look for it. As you said, we're not just trying to be people who enforce rules. We're looking to make this a good experience for every athlete. So um, we have had some very in inventive methods of coaching over the years. Uh, people saying, look for my orange jacket, look for me standing in the middle of the course, whatever. Um, we, you know, we're just discouraging this, folks. And if we see it, we're going to have to act on it. And the bottom line is that if your athlete can't make it through the course without that type of assistance, they're in the wrong event. Um, I mean, that part, knowing to how to, to navigate the course or do whatever, get back up off their skis or if they fall, um, that's part of knowing the sport, and they may not be in the, in the right event. So anyhow, enough said. Thanks, Mike and George. Appreciate it. Um, I think we kind of hit it uh, enough here, but uh, again, just let everyone know, nobody wants it to happen, so. Families and spectators, we talked about the two family hospitality locations, one in the lodge and one at snowshoeing. Um, again, just stressing that those are for family members there supporting the, the athletes and partners. Uh, the family reception, which will be at the Ramada Plaza, on Monday evening at eight o'clock, be in the lower level of the Pinmar in the in the actual Pinmar room, 
it's a great location, um, secluded for the family members so that they will have um, time to talk to one another, uh, share stories, share encouragement. Um, there will be a, a guest speaker uh, to speak on um, situations for Special Olympics families dealing with um, financial situations, educational experiences, that type of thing. So what we stress is that this is not for athletes, delegation members, etc. This is for the family members who are there to support the athletes and partners. Um, it's going to be, like I said, a silent auction and some desserts. And again, it's just for the family members. So spread that around um, to your delegation as well. That uh, athletes should be upstairs, delegation members upstairs, hanging out with their team and um, meeting new friends and dancing, dancing, dancing. Um, family meals, we talked about um, a little bit earlier that family members will not be able to purchase tickets to eat with delegations due to the limitation of the, of the dining area. Um, but uh, families can purchase uh, 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 meals at Whitetail for lunch. Obviously at their hotels there will be some breakfast available there as well. Um, now we say that, that the families cannot eat at the Ramada Inn, but there is a fireside restaurant and lounge which is internally um, not associated with the delegation meals. It's a nice restaurant and they're welcome to eat there. They just will not be able to participate in the, in the delegation dining. Uh, we will give out tickets for the, for the delegation and we'll take as James said earlier. Talk about the lift tickets. Anybody who, um, for families and spectators, uh, wants to get up on the court or on the slopes and enjoy what Whitetail has to offer, here's some lessons or some prices for those uh, lift tickets, etc. Um, again, to take advantage of that, the families have to go to the group sales uh, ticket office not the general one because if they go there um, they may not be informed they have to go to group sales and mention that you're with Special Olympics and you want the group rate for Special Olympics. Again uh, with Alpine individuals who want to go out on the course uh, from a families and spectators uh, perspective or possibly from delegations but uh, walking paths will, will be required um, these will be available at the family hospitality area. Um, no charge for that whatsoever, uh, but going along with the walking pass, you also have a, a waiver to be signed. And again, those will be available at the family hospitality area. Snowshoeing spectators, again, uh, Ron Freeman, who's our uh, snowshoeing director, has hit on this as well. But um, the course is pretty narrow. So there's uh, some uh, limited space for spectators out there, but they will have designated areas and direct people uh, to the right spots. Um, again, with the limited space, the, the building itself where the staging takes place and when the results are posted, that's only for delegation members, um, competitors, and coaches to make sure that uh, everyone's ready for the competition. So again, it, places will be marked. Um, volunteers will be there to help if there's any questions on where to go. Um, spectators, you know, they can bring their chairs um, and go um, so that they can be comfortable out on the course while they're watching the competition. Um, and walking passes aren't required for snowshoeing, whereas they are um, out on the alpine courses. Um, again, we talked about the parking. Um, just again, stress that to all families and, and other people outside your delegation to not park um, down by the Mountain Ops building where snowshoeing staging is need to leave that open for the operations. Attire and hyd hydration. Um, we know the weather is an issue already, so uh, we'll be in constant communication with the, with the resort as well as looking at all the, the conditions. But um, so at this point, you know, just be prepared as we were with uh, time trials. It could be cold, it could be warm, it could rain, it could snow. Just want to make sure everyone's prepared for all possible weather conditions. Um, layers are ideal, so you can take them off, put them back on, whatever. Um, but we always want to make sure that everyone stays hydrated. So as coaches and head of delegations, 
um, just make sure that athletes, partners, et cetera, those that are competing and others, um, that you stay hydrated. We'll have water stations around. Um, just make sure that's taken care of from a safety perspective. Special events, we already talked about the um, opening ceremony, so no need to review that. Uh, the dance is Mardi Gras, if you didn't already know that. Um, again, we, the family reception, um, and again, it's just stressed to spread the word that that's for family members only. Um, again, with the guest speakers, we don't have a lot of disruptions of people coming in and out um, of the family reception, so um, restrict that to family members. I uh, talked about the awards. Uh, we are also looking at the possibility of having a movie, a movie option at the Ramada Plaza during the, the, the dance. Uh, for athletes who are too tired to dance or don't like the noise uh, or actually just want to see a movie. So uh, that is a possibility, um, but please don't pass that along until you know it's confirmed. But know that that is an option that we're working on. Awards and results. Um, we will definitely have those posted. Um, it'll be kind of a new location for those in Alpine. Um, it'll be on the backside um, on the patio uh, on the new addition on the inside of the windows right by the new pizza restaurant. And um, uh, same thing, there will be posted at snowshoeing within the, uh, the operations building on the walls. Um, the one thing we uh, do stress is that during the awards process that delegations do have individuals there to meet and greet their athletes and partners after the award ceremony so that uh, there's a, a good flow to move athletes and partners in the process, get their awards, and then back out to their delegations so that they can um, give them the recognition, greet them uh, with, their, with their medals and ribbons. Food services, I know Jane hit on a lot of this um, earlier, so thank you for that, Jane. Um, again, we're just looking at the people from the Ramada to, to get there um, earlier um, and or the snowshoers, but um, it's going to be tight, like Mike said earlier, and there's multiple places. Uh, it'll be a buffet style, we'll go through the buffet, and then there'll be several rooms and locations uh, where we'll have uh, tables set up. Um, but again, we are stressing the fact that once you're done eating, don't hang out. Um, because there's limited space, go ahead, get up. We'll clean the table, make room for someone else. But we want to make sure that we can get everyone through, and then we can get ready for the entertainment for the evening with the Mardi Gras dance. Uh, for medical purposes, um, at Whitetail, uh, the Ski Patrol will be out on all the courses, and we'll be in contact with them as well. Um, for those of you who um, are not familiar with it, um, at the rental offices where you get your rental equipment, in the lower level of that building is also a walk-in clinic. Um, if someone's not feeling good or you can't get a hold of someone with Ski Patrol, that is an area that, that you can do a walk-in, and they will take care of you there as well. Um, I mentioned Dottie, Dottie Turner from Allegheny will be for the Ramada Plaza in Hald Inn. Wayne Lewis will provide medical overnight for Country Inn and Suites. Just to mention um, upcoming webinars, uh, we had the snowshoeing right before this one. Alpine will be on the 21st at 7. Here's the web links. And um, first of its kind, we're giving our first go at a family webinar. Hopefully that's well attended, so make sure uh, you pass that along to family members from your team, your delegations, so that uh, they can get all the information that the families want to get out to everyone. Just some um, helpful hints here. Uh, we do have Nixle. Um, here's how you can sign up. This is just a way for Special Olympics Maryland and the uh, um, games management team to uh, send out any relevant information, emergencies, um, or any messages and alerts to everyone. So um, when you see this, uh, go ahead and sign up. Um, the instructions are here. And um, 
Hopefully we don't have any alerts, uh, but just in case there are any emergencies, we want to make sure that uh, we can get the messages out that are needed to everyone in a timely manner. And again, we also have a lot of information on our uh, website with my SOMD. Um, there's uh, the website for that. You can go on and get logged in. And we will send out, again, the link, but I want you to have it here for the survey uh, for evaluations after the games close. And um, that will be open through uh, almost the end of March. So we, we really value your uh, feedback. So please take the time to uh, go in and fill out those surveys. And I always stress, don't tell us just some of the things that we need to improve upon. Um, that's extremely valuable. But also let us know if there's anything that you really appreciated or liked so that uh, we don't change that thinking that um, people didn't like it. So give us both sides of the story, if you will. Um, just a few reminders, um, which I think was, was very evident at the time trials with the smiling faces of the volunteers coming in completely drenched <laughs> but uh, smiling. Um, to thank them for their efforts, obviously you all know without volunteers, Special Olympics doesn't happen. Um, same thing to the Whitetail staff. Um, they bend over backwards uh, to make our experience very enjoyable for all involved. So we want to uh, show our appreciation as a Special Olympics family to them for allowing us to come to their resort and take care of us. And in respect to that, we also ask that everyone take a look around your areas and, and do clean up. Make sure you know the tables where you're stationed, um, at, the, at the lodge or resort. Uh, no trash is laying around. We want to let them know how much we appreciate their resort. We want to be welcomed back year after year. So one way we can do that is showing, excuse me, showing them respect of their property uh, by leaving it in a very good condition after we're through with our event. Again, these are the, the contacts. Um, if you have questions, comments, or concerns leading up to the Winter Games, you can contact these individuals. Um, any changes in uh, registration or scratches, whatever, these are where, those, uh, where that information should be directed. Um, and with that, um, if there's any questions that have come through. Um, we'll see, I'm gonna I, open up. Uh, and hopefully if people have a mute function on their phone, if you could mute yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. Uh, hopefully we won't have that echo that we had at the beginning of the... Uh, the moderator has muted the conference. again and that that noise went away so sorry um, so Dottie if you have a question uh, you can type it into the the question session but everybody else's line is unmuted but uh, we do have a typed in question from Janet um, breakfast starts at 6 a 6 o'clock on Tuesday up to what time will breakfast be available Jane that sounds like a question for you um, they normally have it until 8 30 and and the echo is terrible Anybody else? If there's no other questions, um, I appreciate everyone's efforts. I've gone and muted everybody again to get rid of that echo so you can close. But, there you go, Steve. You're back on. Okay, thanks. Um, I appreciate everyone's efforts. Um, as we all know what an undertaking it is um, for a major event like this from the coach's perspective and, and you guys as head of delegations um, coordinating out everything to make it possible for the athletes, partners, and everyone to have a great experience. So um, we appreciate all of your efforts. 
We thank you. We look forward to a great winter games. Uh, we hope that the weather um, holds up and um, we have a good, a good experience with snow and the right atmosphere. So, um, again, as you all well know, we do everything we can. So let's keep in the spirit of Special Olympics as we move forward with the Winter Games. And thanks, everyone, for attending tonight. Hope it was valuable information. And, again, the slides, the event guide, the readable uh, competition schedule, and a few other things will be emailed out to everyone um, by the end of tomorrow. So thank you, everyone, for your participation. Look forward to seeing you here. Uh, two reminders real quick for folks. Uh, just to um, remember that the deadline for any uh, scratches to not have your area charged uh, is 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, also, we will be sending out in advance uh, the divisions or at least your, your individual athlete schedules. That probably won't be until uh, towards the end of next week, but you will get that information uh, in advance as well. Great. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, everyone. We have a, have a good evening, everyone. We appreciate your efforts. Thanks, Steve.